the first season of it. Oh. What an amazing job. Thank you. We we were very proud of it, honestly. Like, and I appreciate the compliment and can take it because we worked hard to make the show stand on its own and to really like let it feel like its own series, give it its own life and its own set of rich characters. And, and we, we felt very good about it. So thank you. How do you top it with season two? Um, I actually feel like we just might. You know, I mean, we're we've already shot three episodes. Um, we're we have scripts up till seven, and so we're you know we've got a, so much going on. And so much richness and tension with the family, um, and and the the tension between the werewolves and the vampires. The vampires have been exiled completely out of the quarter. Um, that there's there's just kind of stuff brewing under the surface at every minute. So there's a lot of conflict and a lot of interesting pairing, pairings and interesting alliances that uh, I think will make it as dynamic as it was in the first season, if not more so. Hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the characters, when you're telling the, like, the Michelson family stories, the characters that inevitably fall by the wayside are our are, are ensemble, the rest of our ensemble, which would be Cammy and, and Marcel and, um, and sometimes Davina, you know, and so uh, we want them to be as featured and as showcased as our original family, so it's about, we are constantly trying to figure out ways to integrate them into the family storyline, uh, and sometimes we get to give them great stuff and sometimes they have lighter episodes, but that's the biggest challenge for sure. Can you tell us about the crossover plans between Originals and Vampire Diaries? Um, you know, we talk about crossovers all the time. We, we have a lot of logistical things that we always have to keep in mind when we talk about crossovers. We've got, you know, an idea right now in our heads of what we want to do, and uh, if, if all was well, it'll happen, but I have no idea if we're going to be able to pull it off, so I'll we'll have to talk about that once, once I know it's actually going to happen. Is there a time jump between seasons? Yeah, there's a time jump of about, on or about four months. We actually kind of like did sort of an equal time jump between the Vampire Diaries and the originals, just to, you know, just to not make everybody's heads explode in case we do something like a crossover. Um, uh, and what we'll see is that our characters have lived up to what they said they were going to do, which is sell their grief, sell the story that the baby has died. So um, we'll see kind of how they've chosen to do that and what it's made each of them feel like. Are there any plans for Rebecca to return at some kind of capacity? Yeah, absolutely. Rebecca, we, we have already rolled camera on Rebecca at least once this season. So, um, you know, I hope that I hope that she'll come back as much as she can. And uh, we'll just keep our fingers crossed about that. What, what about Cole? Cole? A uh, little mini her. spoiler alert. We have, uh, we have also rolled camera at least once on Nathaniel Bazalek. Now, maybe a flashback. I can't make any promises, but... Um, but he, you will see his lovely, beautiful face early in the season. And Esther as well. Um, we have rolled camera on Alex <laughs> Evans, yes. and uh, and uh, that um, that I will say is in flashback. Um, but it was nice to have her back. I'm just giving everything up. <laughs> like, what else? <laughs> is there a reaction that's happened on Twitter based on any of the episodes that you weren't anticipating? Um, gosh, that's a good question. Let me think about that. Um, no, you know, it's, it's funny. I mean, not specifically to any episode. Um, more specifically, you know, there's that ongoing, that ongoing sort of refusal to accept and embrace certain female characters because they, A, got knocked up by Klaus or we seem to have Klaus's interest, which it's always frustrating because, you know, you want those characters to stand on their own and we're not trying to force romance with either of them down at anyone's throat and, um, and they're really strong and fascinating women in their own right and so the, the distaste for their characters from certain elements of the social media universe is frustrating because it's it's in a context that is not entirely fair. But um, but yeah, I can't think of a single episode where I felt like wait a wait a second. Like I can name a few of the vampire diaries where I was taken for that. But so far so good. Like everybody's generally like, oh, we love that. You know. When you write this season arc, do you just plan for one season, or are you looking ahead to like a five season kind of underlying tone? You know, truthfully, it depends. Like for example, in Vampire Diaries, Kevin and I sat down in season two and came up with how we figured the series would end one day. And that's evolved a lot over the years, um, but the spirit of it has sort of remained intact. On the originals, 
if Klaus dies, for example, the vampire universe ceases to exist because all our vampire diaries used to exist. So we have, we're hamstrung a little bit with like big plans for the for the series finale. So I think for the originals, it's more about taking each season, trying to make it feel like a self-contained arc, so that you can enjoy the journey of a season from episode one to episode twenty-two. And then when you tune in for season two, feel like you're seeing a new story um, with not too many like remnants from from the past. Enough to, you know, acknowledge them, but not too much to overwhelm them. So when you do, when you do a, a spin-off from an established series, it's kind of scary. It, yes. It's really good. <laughs> so when did you know that you guys had gotten it right and that it caught on and that you were going to be okay? Um, that's also a good question, you know, because when we aired, when I first saw the episode that we did, the implanted spinoff for The Vampire Diaries, I was like, this is wonderful. I love this. I'm so proud of it. And it was such a great experience to make. And, and watching it for the first time was thrilling, you know, because usually I've seen some cuts when you see it, you're like, <laughs> so fired. Um, and then it aired, and it, and it kind of, you know, I think the numbers were just sort of met. And, and I felt a little bit sad about that because I thought, well, gosh, you know, maybe nobody cares. Maybe nobody wants to see this kind of show. Um, and God bless Mark Pedowitz. He just ignored that. I'm like, we should up the next day. So that gave me personally the confidence boost back to say, no, that there's a market for this show. People are going to want to see it. You just got to, like, do it well. And, um, and it was, honestly, it was when the show aired, the numbers were good. And then over the next several weeks, they just kept ticking off just a bit. That's all you want, you know. You, you you want to you want to go up and set it down. You don't want to be flat, you know. And and that was when I sort of felt like, okay, we're gonna be fine. And when the, when the CW could call us a hit, um, then I felt the confidence of, you know, I think we'll probably stick around for a while. So what was it like when you actually got that next season order? Um, that again, thank you, Mark Pedowitz, seriously, because I mean, it it actually took a lot longer um, to pick up the back nine than I would have liked because he, he was picking them all up together and for me I was like look we got good numbers like let's go come on we got a season to plan but the second season order came super early and it was such a relief because we could basically say to our crew like we're going to be here and we knew that our finale was a season finale and not a oh maybe this is the end of the series finale which is the worst like that, I would hate to have to write that um, and, uh, and it, it just made you feel good to be part of the first the first group that just got to know that they were coming back. So is Michael going to be the main bad guy for season two? And if so, how long is his arc going to be? Well, he's a main bad guy, for sure. I mean, he's definitely, Michael has a difficult time being anything but nasty. So he's going to be uh, a thorn in the side of, of a lot of these characters. Um, but, you know, I can't really speak to that for Esther. You know, I don't think she's up to much good either. So I think between the two of them, they'll be like the key source provider of conflict, and then we'll be, we'll be surprised by just who else can, you know, really be a, how do you say shit stir without saying the word shit, I don't know, a stir, a stir of the pot. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thanks guys. Thank you so Thank you. much. Great to see you.